those who know to have Jesus might be saved. Yes. Bless your name in Jesus. Name. Give you glory, honor, and praise. For Christ's sake, we ask it all. Wait a minute, don't sit down just yet. Don't sit down just yet. Come on, put those hands together. Give God the best praise you can to give it. Come on, snap those happy hands tonight. Come on, I just said happy kids. I said give God the best praise you can to give it. Come on, give God the best praise you can to give it. I need you to go find three people to tell them God got something special for you. Come on, tell that name of God got something special. You've got something special. Come on, encourage that man. God's got something special for you. Come on, if you believe it, come on, give God a praise and a thanks. Do you believe God got something special for you? You haven't been sowing for nothing. You haven't been worshiping for nothing. You haven't been praying for nothing. God, God, I As you take your seat, tell that person three things you love about him, right? Three things you love about him. 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 My God. I wouldn't sit next to somebody who didn't want nothing. I wouldn't sit next to somebody who wasn't expecting God to do something. I wouldn't sit on death row. I'd sit on life row. Where's the life row? Where's the life section at it? You gotta tell your neighbor, this is a life row. This ain't death row. We speak life on this road. We believe God on this road. We expecting God to do something on this road. This is a worship road. This is a praise road. This is a place where he comes me out low. This is the old day of God saved me. Come on, remind your neighbor. This is life road. This ain't death road. This is life road. I would not, uh, no, no. This time out for playing. We got to have some expectation. Eh? We got to believe God for something. Anybody believe in God for something? Man, I don't care what the devil has told you. The devil is alive. Whose report you going to believe? I need a witness in this room. Whose report you going to believe? You might have walked in here with your head down, but you can leave out here with your head high. You might have had your shoulders droop, but you can leave out here past here with your shoulders back. Some pep in your steps, some glide in your stride. And I tell you how you get there. You think about his goodness. Let me tell you another reason. You think about his goodness. Let me tell you a third reason. You think about his goodness. I got a fourth reason for how you think about his goodness. I got a fifth reason. You think about his goodness. Welcome. Just ask your neighbor, do you want anything? Do you, are you looking for anything? Are you expecting anything? That's the question I'll be asking. <laughs> We're going to put it on the front of any church. Don't come in if you ain't expecting nothing. <laughs> Don't come in if you ain't expecting nothing. Because if you're not expecting nothing, you're in the wrong place. Church worship is for expecting people. When you're expecting something, you look different. You act different. You come in with Christ on your mind. Amen. It's just good to be here tonight. And we welcome all of you. We thank God for you being here tonight. We've got representatives from the Ellis Chapel Church, Walls Memorial. We got Lido, we got Good Samaritan, Mondale, Palmer Grove, we got Washington, Bethel, we got Mount Pleasant, we got Tabernacle. Come on, Master, let's be all of them. Amen. Amen. On behalf of myself and my wife, Sister Howard, and of course our children, amen. And I do want you, before I forget, before I forget, my baby girl got a birthday tomorrow. She's going to be 27 tomorrow. <laughs> I 
still can't believe that. I can't believe it's 27. I tell you, I mean, when she come here, I carried her down the hall, but now I can't carry her across. I can't carry her. Across. <laughs> Happy birthday, to the man. Amen. He's doing well. I hope my children, all my kids, I thank God for them. We're just so proud of them for all that God is doing. Amen. We greet each one of you in our virtual space. We thank God for you watching us and wherever you are. We thank God for you. Amen. Can we give these babies a hand behind us? I'm going to have them to free offering a dance tonight. We're going to ask them to come at this time. How are they going? They're not, okay, they're not going to do that. Okay, all right, well, that's cool. Amen. They sing it. Amen. They good to go. Amen. But I tell you what we're going to do because they asked to do this. We're going to do this. Walk the world. Y'all ready? Can you do that for the song tonight? Can you do that for us? You can do that this time. Amen. We'll be so gracious that you all do that. They Amen. Did come and they want to do that. Amen. Put your hands together. Walk the world.
for his hands clapping. It's preaching time. Yes, it is. Before I present, I don't have to introduce because all of us know him. Last night, before leaving, Pastor Howells preached so about giants falling last night. All right. And again, he preached so last night that as if he did, he just said, okay, Lord, this is my last time, so I'm going to give it all I got. <laughs> he preached last night. Okay. Amen. He taught us. Yes. And then he preached us. Uh -huh. And then walked out to her like he hadn't done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> But before Pastor Howells left, we were greeting last night. Pastor Smith, an eight-year-old young man, walked okay. up to me and said, Pastor, I want to be saved. And we thank God for Evan Benson. And this is the unique thing about this young man. He wanted to be saved last night, and this afternoon, he funeralized his father. Wow. He funeralized his father. But he still had enough wherewithal to say, I need the Lord in my life. <laughs> and this is the blessing, you all. In the last two months, Evan will be the seventh young person that we will baptize. <laughs> Oh, y'all, y'all do <laughs> Average age of those children are around 10, 11 years old. Thank you. I think the oldest one was 12, I believe, if I'm right. But, but this, he'll make number seven. Amen. You know, seven is complete. Amen. And the next one's going to be new beginnings. Y'all don't hear what I just said. God is doing a work in our young people. Yeah. Pastor, he's still saving, man. Yeah. Yeah. He's still saving. Yeah. Still saving. Yeah. And the evidence is behind me. Yeah. What the Lord is doing here. Yeah. So I would ask that you would continue to be praying for him and his family. Uh, and I wasn't, uh, but all they had to go on today. Uh, but however, his name is Evan Benson. So keep that family, keep him, and keep family, keep them in prayer. Amen. But we're believing God for great things for him. But again, my friend, my brother, my mentor, I tell you the truth. He he came and he did what he knew how to do. And uh, he is the very proud and esteemed pastor of the Longdale First Baptist Church. That he has served in 44 years. Amen. Come on. Come on. He is no stranger to this house. And we thank God for him. And he's going to come. After these babies will have rendered a selection that is suitable for our hearts to mellow our hearts with the word of God. Again, of course, we have a policy here. Whenever the man of God, woman of God, stand behind this sacred desk, we stand. Amen. In respect and reverence to the God and the man that will be under his leadership. And I would ask that you be so kind and so nice that you will not distract your neighbor as the word of God is being read and being preached and taught. Because we're living in a time we need to hear clearly what God has to say. Amen. So after the choir, these beautiful babies will render a selection. The next voice you will hear is none other than my good friend, my brother, my mentor. He is the very esteemed pastor of the Longbell First Baptist Church, Pastor Billy Howes. Extend your right hand and point it at him and say, God bless. God bless. Pastor Howes. Pastor Howes. Pastor Howes. Pastor Howes. Whatever you do, Whatever you preach, do. The preach the word in this house. Amen. Now come on, clap your hands and expect you.
people say amen. Amen. Come on, let's say them again. Amen. Amen. And this time, I want you to do it for the Holy Spirit. Let's say amen. Amen. That means that it is so. And I'm, uh, tonight, and certainly we greet you in the precious name of him who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Even Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'm so honored tonight to be able to stand in this present. I want you to know my being here has nothing to do with how good I've been. Okay. And it simply says just how good I God is. Yeah. I want you to help me enjoy me tonight and, and put in a hand of celebration as we honor the gift to this house that the Lord has been able to be able to be the vision of He didn't have the right person by his side. She wouldn't be an um, um, embracer. She would be an arm um, breaker. And we thank God for living. Amen. And for all these important gifts that's in the room tonight, uh, my dear friend, uh, Pastor Smith and Pastor Craig, uh, Dr. Goddard, and everybody else that's here. All uh, right. All right. Praise God for these gifts that's in the room. They didn't come by themselves. They brought their spouses along. All first ladies, would you just praise the Lord for them? Amen. 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 But I want you to know you've been handpicked tonight. Anybody just couldn't be here tonight. Amen. But the Lord has, a, has hand selected you tonight. Amen. That's why Poo Poo couldn't come, come to, he couldn't come tonight. Ray Ray couldn't be here. And, and, and Jesse couldn't be here. But there's a reason, because God would have you to be the person that's going to be a part of your neighbor's blessing tonight. So that person sitting in front of you, beside you, and behind you is all a part of your blessing tonight. Can you take a moment and just celebrate your neighbor tonight? One more celebration tonight, and then I'll let you go to your seat. But I want you to know every time I talk about him, that's something that makes me excited. Listen, He's the biggest him I ever known. Yeah. Walked around town with more medicine than the hem of his garments and all the drugs for him. Stepped out on nothing when there was nothing to step on and said, let there be. And all of a sudden, nothing became something. Took a man, took a, and not the dirt, it's only the dust of the dirt. Was able to frame it and blew it in it and became a living soul. And said, there go my man. I want you to know he's the biggest him I ever know. Went to a place called Calvary. And when all of the enemies came to get him, and he said to them, ain't nobody going to take my life, but I'm going to lay it down. And if I lay it down, I get it up again. Do you know him? He's the savior of the world. Come on, celebrate the name of Jesus. He's my savior. He made him wonderful. Still ain't God. Yeah. I thank God for my beautiful wife tonight. Thank God for her. Yeah. I don't want to the first lady, but uh, she is the leading lady. Yeah. And I thank God for her. I'm so glad to have her with me tonight, as always. And, and I'm just grateful for, to the goodness of God that He has allowed us to tabernacle in this place Amen. one more time. And as I come, I'm grateful that Pastor Howard has allowed us to come another night. I don't know what to do now. I got Smith here, Craig, Giants in ministry. Amen. He's been around for a long time. I think Smith and Jesus are preaching together. Amen. This is my brother. He, amen. Now, this is my dear, dear brother. Amen. We cannot say that because he just enriched every time we go to the pulpit. 
I just thank God for him and Pastor Craig who can give it to you any, any way you want it. He can sing it out. Yeah. But he'll make sure that you're going to hear him. For him tonight. Uh, Reverend God, I thank you so much. And I tell you, as I said on last night, less means more. He keeps on giving us more. Yeah, yeah, I just pray for tonight and thank you so much for uh, allowing us this privilege to be here. Now, like I said, I didn't come here to do uh, better preaching. I just came to do some more preaching. Yeah. 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 But I want to call your attention tonight to the Gospel of Matthew. Uh -huh. Chapter number 13. Oh, uh, yeah. And I want to commence our reading tonight at verse number 24. Jesus, in the disclosure of giving scenarios of what the kingdom is like, Paul's and toward the end, he stops in the middle of what he's doing and he talks about a very special parable. That reminds us that the work won't always be easy. Well, well, Let's see. If you're there, verse 24 says, And behold, uh, this, I'm sorry, Jesus told them another parable. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good yeah. seed in yeah. his field. Uh -huh. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went yeah, away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. Uh -huh. The owner's servants came and came to him and said, Sir, did you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this. He replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered. Because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in the bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my bones. Is that what your Bible is? Yes. Amen. You may be seated in the presence Praise Reverend. of our Lord. Let us pray, Father. Again, I thank you for your grace and your love. Yes, and for the excellency of your word. We realize, God, where there is no word, our people will perish. Yes. And so now, Holy Spirit, we beckon you to speak now to me and through me. And allow God, your word, to go forth. Use me for your glory. God, give me your strength. That whatever I do, you might get all of the glory. And to the end, somebody might be saved and encouraged to know that it's worth living and staying with Jesus. Now, bless us and let the words of my mouth. The meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Yes, yes. Oh Lord, my strength. My blessed Redeemer, do we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 I need thee. What's going on? All right. Oh, yeah. I need thee. Yeah, every hour yes, I need thee uh, yes. oh, please bless bless, Lord. bless, Lord. bless, Lord. bless me now my say Yes, 
in this hand. Ah, I need thee. charred anywhere from 250 to 400 acres. Amen. Houses were decimated. Yeah. Yeah. People were actually killed. Yeah. Uh, and we could look even farther because everywhere we look across the world, not only in the U.S. of A., but we can look across the world and there's been tsunamis. Yeah. There has been lightning strikes. Uh, there yeah. have been volcano eruptions and Disease, and we ought to know about that because not so long ago we oh, had to oh. deal with the COVID. Yeah. 
And somehow or another, when we saw, we found that it just was not unsaved folk dying. But there were saved people dying too. And so we began to scratch, and some folk have gone as far as to ask the question, uh, uh, they, they are doubting the fact that if God is really good, why does he let good folk die? And why does he let things, and, and we now we're wondering, uh, some are even wondering, is there really even an existence of God? Oh, God. Because bad things come. And you try to do what's right, you try to live what's right, yeah. but trouble just keep on coming. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh yes, uh, uh, uh. so when I, when, I, when I look at this tonight, and, and you need to understand it doesn't matter how much you love God. You got an enemy sitting on the sideline that don't mind you talking about him as long as you don't live too good for him. Oh, yes, he'll let you go to church as long as you don't feel the presence of God. He don't mind you going to church if God's power can't move you. you it ought to bother you that you come to a worship house to give God glory, but Satan put a cap on your hallelujah. And he puts a cap on your thank you, Jesus. And now you can't give him glory. Now you're criticizing everybody who gives him praise because now they're praising too long. They're shouting too long. They're singing too long. The preacher's preaching too long. And you've been bored since the time you walked in here. Yes, yes. Who gave you that spirit? Some are beginning to doubt. There's an enemy in the house. And so we love it. When I look at this text tonight, and there are Jesus dealing with, with so many other uh Given uh, illustrations of parables and that has been going on and about different things that is happening, and, and he starts out by talking about the many kinds of seeds that are so uh, so without the so seed. And you remember that some fell on good ground, some yeah. on the stony, yeah. and some got choked out, yeah. and but yet there were some that brought forth fruit. Yeah. Uh, uh, some thirty, some sixty, some even a hundredfold. Well, you've got to realize that everybody in the church is not productive in the Lord's house. Yeah. There are some people who get choked out every Sunday. Yeah. Oh, yes, uh, they look churchy, but they get choked out, Pastor Smith. Uh, uh, there's something about them that if you don't be that choked out, listen, the Bible says about them that the cares of the world has a way of pulling them. And I know that's true because when it's time for me to usher on Sunday morning, they somebody on my job talked about us going down to the beach. And so now my service for God dies that I may go and do my own thing. It's amazing how everything can call you away from the will of God. I want you to know there's an enemy in this house. Talk, talk. Oh. The text says, another parable he put forth to them saying that the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while he slept, uh, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went its way. Can I just pause long enough to tell you that uh, the church needs to wake up? Because while we've gone to sleep, our children have been stolen. Yeah. While we've gone to sleep, that there are they are vaporing. I, 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 I had a, a member in my family and, and, and said to me one time, he said, Well, you just don't know the reason I vape because it makes me feel so good. Uh, uh, with a boldness and with an, almost with an arrogance and says that I can't help it. It makes me feel real good. What happens when what devil, the devil has? Makes you feel so much better than what God is. Yeah. Yeah. And some of us used to know that because we used to be the same way. Oh, yes, uh -huh. and some of us are still that way. Uh, some of us still uh, 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 rather drink uh, the Hennessy than they drink the communion. <laughs> and so, but when, I, when I look at this tonight, and, 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 and I just want to just venture into this passage just a few moments. But I want to look here because when we see here in this passage the issue of evil that's in the world. Uh -huh. uh, and, and, and we have at least four basic truths that Jesus is trying to teach us here in this parable. Let's see. The first thing he talks about, we can see that he talks about the guise of evil. Yeah. All right. Or the gullibleness of evil. For the Bible says that the devil does not come in saying, I'm the devil. Uh -uh. 
He didn't hold his hands up. And he does not just walk into your life any kind of way. But he comes so and hope that nobody That's will right. see him. Yeah. Why? Because the Bible says that, that the man sowed good seed in his garden, in his field. But while they slept. You see, the devil won't come in and look you in the eye. He has to find you uh, and make sure that you can't really see him. Because when he's done what he's doing, he's trying to do something to sabotage what the Lord has already ordered. And you need to know that there sometimes. Have you ever gone to a service and feel like the whole service was just a weight was on it? I know how that is. Uh, when the weight was on it, you can you try to pray, you can't get a prayer up. There's not a, there's a neck over the top of God's hand down upon you because Satan has not only come in by himself, but he's brought some imps along with him. And so what he did, he's, he's coming out with power, trying to be able to stop us from moving forward. And that ought to be the time that the saints ought to rise louder than they ever did before. They ought to go higher because you've got to understand that there's something the devil don't want you to do. But you've got to be like old mama who used to say a long time ago, I can't help but praise him. Oh, and I look back over my life that road, that rest destroyed everything I had. you got to know that the devil got a guise that he comes in sneaking. All right. All right. All right. All right. And so, look at what he says here. Uh, uh, the master did not we sow good seed? Good seed. Good seed. Right. Where did these weeds come from? Yeah, well, well. well, let me tell you, you can't tell them apart. Look. Because they look like God's people uh, on the top. Uh, They'll sing like you sing. Uh, Shout like you shout. Uh, but just, just on the top. Oh, yeah, uh, 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 when we read Genesis 1 and, and 31, when uh, when God saw that all that he made, he said, was good. He said, as a matter of fact, it was very good. Have you ever wondered something? And, and now all of a sudden, we see all these horrible things and diseases going on, and even our world is unhappy. Uh, because uh, you guys remember, Paul did say uh, in uh, Romans 8 and 22, he said that, and we know that even the whole creation uh, has been groaning yeah. as it is in the pains of childbirth right up until this present time. Right. In other words, that even uh, uh, stuff that grows don't even act right. No, no. Uh, some things that doesn't even happen now because now we have to manipulate it to grow even our own food. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. But now notice here, uh, I, I, the thing that bothers me, Pastor Craig, if God made everything very good, All right. uh, and notice that Adam and Eve are fresh off the press of God's right. 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 And, and it has given them power that they got so many things that they're able to do that all I need you to do is be able to rule on the earth like I rule in the heavens. Right. Uh, you can call them, call any animal what you want, you give them the name. Yeah. Whatever it is, you tell them what to do. You got power, Adam. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to come talk to you every day in the cool of the day. And I can speak to you like you need. And you got to understand that you got power or control over everything that's down here. Yes. But an enemy came in the oh, yeah. You got to understand, if Adam and Eve was that powerful, and in, in their initial beginning, knowing that the hand of God was on the upon them, well, now we have become full blown. All to the right. point that Satan is trying to recognize and to realize if he, if he did it with Adam and he lost his power instantly, what do you think he's been doing all this time and getting ready for you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. You got to understand that there are some things that will cripple us. Yeah. And so no wonder when Jesus come along and say that men are always praying. Yeah. Uh, 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 and so listen to your heart. When, when something bad happens to you, or to someone else. It's not because of some specific sin that's in your life necessarily. Because you got to understand that the whole world has fallen. Yeah. And you got to understand that the human race as a whole has uh, invited evil into the world by our collective sins. Yeah. You yeah. see, you can't talk about mine. It's all of us. For yeah. the Bible says all have sinned and come short. And because if that's the case, you got to understand that the wages of sin is death. And that's, that is a power that sin has over you until you have God in your life completely. And I 
need to understand how that we think uh, that we can go through any kind of situation without him on our side. Yes. Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. Yes. And so good people suffer. Right. Uh, sometimes while bad people seem to be prospering. Right. Because what Satan has in his corner, he holds them while he goes and tries to keep others from God. Yes. Jeremiah said in 12 -1, that righteous are thou, O Lord. Oh, Lord. When I plead with thee, right. yet let me talk with thee and thy judgments. Mm -hmm. Wherefore doeth the way of the wicked prosper? Wow. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Have, have you ever wondered why do all the faithless live at ease? No. They don't have faith, but they're having it all right. Uh -huh. Oh yes, some people uh, have have looked at all the things that has gone on, and they believe. That, uh, that certain folk cause certain sins, uh, certain things to happen. But you got to understand that uh, sin uh, will find itself in every region. Yes. Yes. All right. Somebody said once, uh, not so long ago, there was a big uh, flood. There was a hurricane that came through uh, in the city of New Orleans. All right. And it came uh, two days before. Uh, the Southern Decadence Day. You know what you know what that is. Right. The Southern Decadence Day is the time is a it's the gauge Mardi Gras, uh, where all of the gays would get together. Uh, and it came and notice it came and it hit uh, two days before the Southern Decadence. Right. And people were talking about the fact that God got mad at them and killed them, wow. stripped them in, and it tore things up. But now, ain't it amazing? It hit everywhere but where they were meeting. They were meeting at the first quarters, but the storm didn't come that way. You got to understand, and what did God do? Well, let me tell you something. When I look back and see all the evil around me, I wonder why God ain't here some folk in my house. Why he ain't here some folk in my community? Because I see evil folk all the time. I see people who are cruel and they're mean. And Satan has a way of moving in and moving them just at Time when you're about to do something for God, the devil always shows up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, uh, when, 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 and you gotta realize, and a lot of the church folk, because you know God, you think you don't have to deal with evil folk. Yes, you do. Yeah. And you won't have to be able to be on God's side trying to win there. Yeah. Let me tell you what's wrong with the church, uh, Pastor Craig. Some of us have gotten so good till we don't look to see folks saved. Thank God for the young man last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've gotten to the point because we still have that old testament mentality. What Jesus once said, he said that you heard that it has been said that thou should love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Uh, there are a lot of folks still got that and they hate folk in the church. How can you be in the same church and hate each other? How is it that you can get along with a fool outside, but you can't get along with a saint inside? You can get somebody who cursed you out, who's done everything wrong against you, and you forgive them outside, but you come to the Lord's house, and all they got to do is look at you wrong. And you're mad, and you hate people, something's wrong. No, not with them. There's a God that ain't got his hand around you, like he also inside, that you need inside of you. So he says, uh, but Jesus said, but I say to you, you got to love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Are you listening? Pray for them that despitefully use you. And he never put in that if you want to. But he said, and those that persecute you, you got to make sure that things are happening. And that ye may uh, be the children of our Father which is in heaven. And he that maketh his son to rise on the son to rise on the evil and on the good. And you got to understand how good God is because God still believes that even the folk that got Satan's hand on them can still be saved. Oh yes, I know that's right. Because you got to realize that his, he allows his, his blessing to frame on the righteous and the unrighteous. You see, every time, if you got a so saved folk in your, in your house, don't you know that every time God wakes you up, he wakes them up too? Every time he blesses them, he blesses you too? You got to understand that uh, we've come to the place until the gods of the enemy has 
blinded us to believe that we can't do it. Uh, uh, I believe everybody in this community to be saved. That's right. But too many folk in the church don't believe it. I remember the late Dr. Friend of mine, Dr. Montgomery, who believed in evangelism. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Who believed in going. Uh, I remember he and my good friend Smith, uh, we across the state, we, uh, there were people, we got ready to go out one time with a bunch of preachers. Oh, we were in Ashby. Yeah. And it's amazing that when we got ready to go out, all the preachers disappeared. Oh. Oh. Yes, One preacher got up and he said, uh, I can't go out. Because okay. okay. my security is behind this pulpit. I'm afraid to go out there. I don't know who I'm going to face. That's right. That's right. Don't, don't look at me crazy. Come on now. Because a lot of you look deep and you're real shy. You say that you can't talk about Jesus. You can't reach nobody. And the Great Commission, who gave you permission to cancel it when Jesus didn't go to you and make disciples and you ain't talking to nobody? You're talking to church folks, you're talking to people that's no threat to you, that's no harm to you. You got to learn to realize that there are something that God has chosen you for. The first thing he said, if you're going to follow me, you got to deny yourself. Give up you. Stop worrying about where you are because life and death ain't in your hand, but it's in my God's hand. So, beloved, I wonder what's wrong with the church. Why the devil has that stronghold on us? My, my, my. And then Friday tells us they've gone to sleep. Mm -hmm. oh. I look at my wife sometimes. And uh, not only her, but me. You get on our. With these social media things, uh, All right. looking at reels, uh, walks up, and, <laughs> and next thing you know, we're looking at it, and after a while, you see it drop out of her hand. <laughs> <laughs> I can be doing the same thing on it, and next thing you know, I'm coming in my neck. I'm trying. <laughs> That's the same, huh? <laughs> what I'm trying to get you to see. Is that all of us got our own entertainment uh, oh, that tends to put us to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And you got entertainment that's putting you to sleep. Yeah. Because yeah. now you do what you want. Yeah. And you're no longer doing what the Lord is yeah. required. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to hasten on in this mess. Because I, 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 I told you that the, the, the guise of evil is the first thing that comes. He comes in subtle with the intent to try to be able to get you. Yeah. But then I want you to look at the general of this evil. Uh -huh. Let's talk about who he is. Who is uh, because theologians uh, has, has used a term called uh, theodicy. Uh -huh. yep. The word theodicy yep. means uh, it is an attempt to justify God's actions yeah. right. and explain the evil and the, and the injustice that exists in the world. Uh -huh. And you're always trying to talk about what, what, the, what the devil is doing and what God is doing. And, and yet you got to understand, can you always know the difference? Because there are some times that the devil is doing something, but he's got permission from God. Wow. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's right. Jesus. Oh, yes. And some stuff we go through, and we talk about, we cry about what the devil is doing. Have you ever thought about God is trying to bring you somewhere? Oh, yeah. right. And the only reason, because let me tell you something, uh, I, 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 the thing that always bothered me, Pastor Les, is when I, when I looked at the scripture and said there was a time when the sons of God were to present themselves before right. God yeah. as Satan. Satan. Uh -huh. And the devil came also with him. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed that he didn't kick it back out. That's right. He raised the question, what are you doing here? Right. Oh, I hear just walked in and just, and you got to understand, uh -huh. don't ever try to run the devil out oh, of the church. No, no, no. Uh, what you need to try to do is convert him while you got him in the church. Yeah. 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 The very folk we're running out might be the very folk that need to be saved. Yeah. Have you ever thought about that sometimes God may have laid his hand on the devil the reason he 
want to your sanctuary. But you are so deep now that you are so uh, selfish now that you can't, you don't have the spirit of God that deserves now that the person really needs to know Jesus. And then what God did, you remember when Satan comes, the first thing he says to him, uh, all right, let me ask you something. Have you considered all right. my servant? Yeah. Yeah. What happens when God sick the devil on you? Sometimes there's something in you that you don't know that's in you. And what I need you to do, I need you to test it. Well, I know what's wrong. Can I get a, a couple of disclaimers? Well, can I? Let me tell you. God said, you can touch him. Whatever you do, don't touch his life. Take everything. If you got everything a head around it, if you move it, you crush it to your face. That's it. That's it. And you got to understand that the reason you are losing some stuff is because God says you don't need it anyway. It's your distraction. Some stuff that the devil is sending, he's coming, he's bringing because God said you don't really need that. And we don't have enough sense to remove it ourselves. Wow. Wow. All right, I preach by myself. But he, notice what he said. Uh, he says, uh, but much has been written trying to explain the problems of evil. But now I notice, but he said, I tell you what it is, an enemy has done this. Yes. And, and who is the enemy? The enemy is nobody but the devil. The Bible says he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Don't you know when he look at you, you look at your little happy hips, you look at me for him? Uh, you gotta understand that uh, that uh, Satan is after the dust, and you are made from the dust of the earth. Uh, you remember when he got cursed? Uh, he, he gave Adam his cursing, and what would happen to him, or what would happen to Eve? But he said that on your belly you shall crawl and shall eat dust. You do know you're made from dust. You do know he's after you. He's trying to eat you. And so many people don't believe in the existence of a person of spirituality known as Satan. That's all the devil. And so what they are doing, uh, they are trying to justify. That's good. Uh, but you've got to understand our spiritual enemy is never uh, pre presented as a real symbol. He's an actual reality. Yeah. All right. All right. The devil is real. But now let me get to this story. Let's not hold you here too long tonight. But now notice the Bible says an enemy has done this. Ask him to raise the question, have you, did not you sow good seed? All right. Well, why, what comes, why, why is there weeds in the field? All right. And notice here, it wasn't until they grow up that they began to look just alike. Right. Can I tell you something? Uh, what they sold was known as Darnell. Uh -huh. <laughs> Darnell, they sold Darnell. Right. Darnell is a poisonous That's right. weed. All right. Some of you know it because you smoked some Darnell. <laughs> <laughs> what they used to do, oh yes. It has a poison that is trying to give you a high. And notice that uh, uh, back in the day, what they would either do, they would even put it in beer, or they would put it in bread. You would eat the bread to get a high, to get a contact. Even in some of uh, the places that they began, uh, there was a person named by the name of Thomas Howard, who would begin, and along with some colleagues got together, and they began to do a research on it. Began to look at, and they began to use it as a type of anesthesia, because it would knock the brain out. It will allow the brain to lay down. And what they, what they was doing here, when they sold uh, the wheat, an enemy came along who didn't like uh, this particular owner. So what he would do, he'd come in the night and put enough poison to let it look like wheat in hoping that those who took up the wheat would get enough poison in it that when they ate it, the whole people would be wiped out. Can I tell you that that Satan's out, he's around and he's spreading what you call Darnell. Darnell is that he, what he's doing, he's putting it in the minds of people. Yes. And you gotta understand that on the top it looks the same. But underneath the roots were the stuff that made the separation. 
you got to understand where your root is in. Because everybody ain't rooted in Jesus. So everybody's not of the root of Jesse. But somebody is of the root of the devil. You look good in the church. You look like you're on fire. But the truth of the matter is, you're looking good on the top. You act like everybody else. But underneath, there's a thing called Darnell that's wrapping up the saints of God. And even though you're here, you're not producing any fruit. That's the reason for Darnell. It's to stop you from producing fruit. And so, beloved, what are we going to do? Let's see. <coughs> Can we pull them up? All right. He said, no. Go put your hand on them. But do me a favor, let them grow together. Yeah. Well, well, they don't represent us, but no. They don't represent us. But how do I know that you're not mine? The only way I'm gonna know you're not mine is you don't produce fruit. All right, all right. right. Listen, listen. And a lot of us are in the church. Come on, preacher. But we're producing no fruit. We did good on Sunday. We did let the Lord is on our side. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, if you are weak, you gotta let God domesticate you. Yeah. All right. Because you got to understand that when they started out with oat and rye, uh -huh. it was not a food that you could eat. Oh, right, right, right. But farmers knew how to domesticate. Right. They kept working with it and they tried to do it with Darnell. But Darnell is a rejected root. Yes, sir. It's a rejected root. It's a killing root. Uh -huh. It's a stifling root. Uh -huh. You wonder why you can't get your praise on? You might be sitting beside Darnell. You wonder why that you can't see God doing what he needs to do. I hear your voice, Reverend. It might be because you're listening and allowing the wrong stuff to entangle your life. And so the Bible says that what happens here is that they begin he was, the, the, the owner come and said, well, I know I planted good seed, yes. but while we're all sleeping, an enemy has come in. Yes. He's put Darnell, he's put so weeds among tares, among the wheat. Yes. Can I tell you that everybody, the reason you ought to have spiritual discernment yes. is the only way to know what Darnell is, you got to have enough God's spirit in you. To know how to try the spirit and buy the spirit. I told you you can't run them out, but you gotta at least check them sometimes. Sometimes you gotta, gotta ask people, tell me how the Lord saved you. Sometimes you ought to check them out and tell me, when was the day that the Lord changed your life? Because I'm here to tell you, everybody that's born ought to know your birthday. Everybody that's been uh, into the world ought to find out what day you were born. Yeah. But the Bible tells me, but did they say, well, do you want to go and let us pull them up? Yeah. And I hear the owner say, no, because number one, you're not qualified. Come on, come on. You got to understand that we can't do everything. There are some things that the Lord has not ordered our steps to do. Yeah. And so the first thing that he told them, he said, leave them alone. Yeah. You are a planter, yeah. but you are not a reaper. Yeah. In other words, you can tell what's going on, yeah. but you don't have the power to pull it up. Yeah. You can tell how it looks, yeah. but you can't manage it on your own. Yeah. But he said, in the last day, yeah. leave them alone. Yeah. Because I got another group of people called the harvesters. And when the harvesters come, they know how to identify the root. You're looking at the top, but they look at the bottom. And they'll try to tell you what's not with them. They'll tell you what they don't really have. And I want you to know we're living in a season that you got to know who have you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. 
Stop trying to pretend. You gotta tell God all the truth. You gotta tell him, Lord, I need you to play your hand on me. And God is able to do anything. He's able to turn life around. I say he say leave him alone. Because what you didn't know is that the farmer had a plan. Well, I already knew that the devil was coming along. Stop trying to cross so much. Didn't you know that you got saved? The devil was going to come along. And didn't you know when God saved you, when he put the church together, he knew it would always be pure. But the devil's going to come in. And God said, that's all right. Let him hang around long enough. Because I got in my arsenal. I got a healer. I got a person that's able to separate everything. And he said, let me tell you what my plan is. You may not see it right now. But hold on. Just a little while longer. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove to you that I got all power in my hand. I'm already set up a plan to take over their life. What I want you to do is when I begin to get the harvest, I want you to get all the tags and I want you to wrap it up and pour it in the fire. It's going to be burned. And I want you to get all the wheat and put it over in my barn. One of these days, that's going to be a judgment. One of these days, that's going to be a change. And what I'm glad is that what the Lord didn't do, He said, uh, the reason I didn't uh, kill everybody, the reason I didn't hold up everybody, because I realize uh, I give grace. That's the reason uh, that the Lord let the devil uh, hang around you, because you already know that you pulled up the devil, he might pull up a weak Christian. That's called grace. God is able to take care of everybody to say, Lord, Lord, do not know him, but God will make a way out of nowhere. And my God wants you to know that in this season, you got to get your hands in God's hand. In this season, you got to be ready to go back to the word. You got to hang in the Word instead of reading magazines. Read the Word of God because there's power in the Word. There's power in the name of Jesus. Somebody know he's got all power in his hand. It looks like you enemy may be with it, but hold on a little while longer.
and declare that God has given you all power. And let me tell you what we don't do. He said, I'll give you power. You can lay hands on the sick. That's right. And the sick will be here. You running around scared of what? You can take a serpent and even serpents will harm you. You got to know the power you got. How can you come to church and you can... And you, you can't even pray the devil off the corner. Jesus. Run around here dressed up looking good and tore up on the inside. No spirit. And all you think I need to do is be in church. God don't need you to come to church. He says. Oh, oh. No, he don't. God needs you to be in the kingdom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I went there saying, well, what you get? Nothing. It's amazing how, how quickly and how bored we can get uh, in Brother Goddard in church. In church. <laughs> when we make our own joy. Because yeah. right. joy is inside us. Yeah. And there ought to be something that the Spirit ought to connect with yours. Yes. Amen. 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 And I don't understand how you come to the Lord's house and there's always something wrong. Yeah. And if any preacher is worth his word, worth, when you leave one person because they preach the word. The next place you go to, guess what you're going to get? The word. The word. <laughs> so why are you learning from the word? Embrace it. Yes. Let it, it all not have to, have to be the preacher. They have to come pray for somebody. Yes. Oh, when that same spirit is in oh, you. Oh, Run around and get mad at the preacher because he didn't come see the hospital. <laughs> Were you there? Oh, oh, man. Oh. Oh. Were you there? Stop seeing your hand on the sick. Yeah, my God. And you went around. Here you are. The devil has done this. Yeah. Yeah. He messed us up. And I know we spoiled most of you. Yeah. I know we did. Yeah. 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 We spoiled yeah. most of you. Because yeah. we got to do it for you. But the season is over. You got to know God. Yeah. 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 You can carry this far. But this revival is about you getting your own That's self it. in mind. That's That's right. Right. What difference, what good would it be if you sat in church all your life and go to hell? Yeah. Go to hell through the church. That's, that's tough, isn't it? Lord, you know, did not we cast out devils in your name? Yeah. Lay hands on the sick? Yeah. And did all you want to say? Yeah, but you just talk about that. Yeah. Don't fool yourself. I want you to send an invitation to and I want you to know an enemy has done this. He's hurting right. us. Right. Right. And we're wondering why we can't word. make things move. Jesus, when Jesus said, if you abide in me, my word in you, you can say to this mountain, be removed. And it will be removed. Right. Right. He can say that you can, uh, uh, whatever you ask in my name, he says, I'll do it if you abide in me. Right. And why won't we try? Right. Why won't we try it? We always want something, but we're not willing to do our part. No. Most of the scriptures say promises is if you do this, if then he will do that. Uh, yes. All right, yes, yes, right. You said, I asked him to do it, he ain't done nothing. You know why? Because you, you forgot your ill. Uh, <laughs> you forgot your ill. Tonight, I'm talking to save folk tonight. You're the persons who are leading the church. And you've been comfortable where you've been for the last 20 years. Position-wise. Position. I'm everything God wants me to be. But practically, I have arrived at everything I need to be. What am I saying? Positionally, you're God's child. But in the practice of what you do, you don't look like a child. You don't do the things he asks you to do. And let's be honest, we're talking about all of us. And we're wondering why we're not gaining more. Thank you for the seven souls that saved. But some of our baptismal pools have been dry for a long time. I got a dry one up there. But like I got some folks that say, if you think I'm going out to do all the witness, then I'm not going to do it. But I trained you Amen. and showed you how to be an example. We got we to let folk realize you're going to get to heaven by your belief in who the Lord is. 
You're in this place today. I know you're saved. I know you love God. And nobody's questioning that. But can you do more for him? Can you serve him and not just come to church to talk about it? Can you go on your job and walk about it? Are you looking for people day by day that you can witness to? Are you looking for folk that don't know Jesus and you know they don't know Jesus? And you know what they're going through? And you got a hope in your hand and you ought to have it in your heart. Amen. That you're able to share it with somebody. You're in this room tonight. I want you to come to this altar. Because there is someone here tonight that you've been robbing somebody of their blessings because you have not walked into the things God told you to walk into. And there's some of you here who heard the Lord speak, but you say he can't be talking about me. Well, who, why did he save you? He God. saved you for himself. Yeah. Amen. You can't tell the one who saved you and owned you, made you, until you ain't going to do it. That's a hard-headed child. Yeah. Yeah. You got to walk to what the Lord said you need to come to. And I just believe right here yeah. on Black Street, yeah. if you come here and do what God said, God, I apologize. I repent because I know what you told me. But I was more in myself than I was in you. Right. Let's be honest. I've been there. Right. I've been in one of these preachers been there. Yes, yes, but we got to come to the place that we got to get honest with God. Right. I didn't come here for a revival. I come here for an assignment. That's it. That's it. And it's time that we walk to where the Lord can use us. I want you to come today. I know you're safe. Everybody, I want you to stand. Amen. We got to get the practice of learning, learning to stand at the right time, standing for it. We gotta be what the Lord would have us to be. Do what the Lord would have us to do. He's in this place. tonight who go to church but you're not saved. You're still doing everything that you used to do. Only thing you add to your agenda is church. But God has a bigger plan for you than you got for yourself. I want you to walk this way if you're here and say God I need all of you. You stand in need of prayer tonight. Can you come? And ask the Lord to be able to take you where you are. You just can't keep sitting in church and nothing's happening. You gotta start feeling guilty about the fact that God can't touch you sitting in the Lord's house. We got to, we got to get there. We must be there. That others, I know that is our prayer. I want you to come. Don't miss this evening. Don't miss this evening. Remember, the devil wants you dead. And the best way to kill you is to kill your joy. 
kill your spirituality. Because we can do that, he has. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Father, we come. And we are aware that you are aware that the things we do are sometimes so misleading to call your name but yet do not the things you tell us to do. And we realize, God, that we have grown in our spirit, so many of us, until we've gotten to the point to believe since then nothing happened, I'll be all right. And when the truth of the matter, you told us that we need to repent and be baptized, even in your spirit, every one of us, for the remission of our sins. And Father, in your name, here is a host of people. And many and most of them are sincere about giving you everything. And so, Lord God, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to allow the dying them to heaven to fall fresh on this altar. The altar is alive. And I'm asking in the name of Jesus, God, that you will set it aflame. That they may feel the heat and the warmth of your love telling them that things are going to be all right. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit that's not like you. Satan, you no longer will have a runway in this church. You no longer have a jurisdiction to strut your stuff in the face of God, in the face of God's people, and to say that it's all right. We bind you and curse you back to the very hell for which you come. Take your hands off of Macedonia and off of every soul that has come to this place. We ask God that you will loose and set free in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood against you that you will no longer be able to walk in this place. I pray that power will be become from the pulpit and in every side and side of every pew. I pray that your name will be glorified. Thank you, Lord. And we give you all the glory. Father, forgive our sins. Blood on our transgressions. And make us to be fully what you want us to be. Oh God, we're sorry. So many people, perhaps we fish because we were caught up in ourselves. Lord, heal us. Father, help us to be who you want us to be. I pray for every priest man, every priest woman that's at this altar today. I pray, God, for their spouses, God, that you might connect them with power. That they may have the oversight of your flock in such a way, God, that when you speak, your word will be heard. And I pray for those who serve in ministry. Let them know that they got to have a Stephen spirit, a Philip spirit, not by position, but by practice. Help us to go forth in your name. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise for the great things that you've done. And Father, take over our lives. Make us to where we need to be. And make help us to be all that we should be according to your will and your way. For we ask you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mark that God, Christ gave them power. That 
word power in the Greek is exousia, meaning authoritative power. You've got authority over the devil. Amen. Pastor House, thank you, man. Thank all of you for coming tonight. Can we do one of the most to give these babies a hand tonight? Right, yes, let me thank God for coming out. We've got a school tomorrow, but we thank you all so much. Thank you, Pastor Craig, Lady Craig, all of you today for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor and Mom. Thank you all for coming. Amen. We tomorrow night, same time, same place, same station, doing the same thing. All right, all right. Let somebody go, bring somebody with you. Amen. Tomorrow night. If the Lord shall give us grace. Let's stand tonight. Let's stand tonight. We're going home on that word. Amen. Amen. Got that person by the hand. Shake that hand. Look about the face. Tell them I love you. I love you. And you can't do nothing about it. Tell them your neighbor. I don't care what you may face on tomorrow. Just know you serve a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you may ask a thing according to the power according to the power according to the power that's at work in you walk in your authority and watch God work have a good evening, God bless you I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>